The IUD or intrauterine birth control device is one birth control method that evokes mixed reactions among us women. In this video, I'm going to share 12 reasons women intensely dislike the IUD gathered both from my experience as a general practitioner and an educator on sexual health. Hey, welcome back to Ask Away Health. I'm Dr. Sylvia and you will not regret clicking on this video. Make sure you give it a like and subscribe, but let's get into the subject. The IUD has been one of the most important tools in a woman's birth control arsenal since the 60s when it's used as the birth control coil became popular. The IUD is a small device that's fitted through the vagina into the womb to prevent pregnancy. The copper IUD, that is the one without any hormones, does this by preventing fertilization and implantation while the hormone containing IUD for example Myrina, Kylene, Jadis, Skylar, Liletta and so on also prevents ovulation in addition to making fertilization and implantation less likely to happen inside the tubes and the womb respectively. That is to say they thicken the mucus in the cervix so that sperm cannot reach an egg, they thin the lining of your womb and they stop your eggs from fully developing every month. Both the copper IUD and the hormone or progesterone IUD have nearly a hundred percent effectiveness rate and one of their most significant advantages is that you don't have to remember to take them every day or insert them every time you have sex. They just stay where they are for five or ten years in some cases. For many of us, once inserted, you don't even feel it. So you can get on with your busy life as an achiever doing whatever you want to do. What, my friends, is not to like? Hmm. A lot, <laughs> actually, according to many women. And they would not wish the IUD, whether it's the copper or the progesterone IUD, on their worst enemies. But before I share the reasons they feel this way, I think it's important to say that a great number of women do champion the IUD and think it's one of the best choices or decisions they ever made for their own birth control. So everyone's experience is individual, let's respect that please. And just because someone you know had a horrendous experience on a particular method does not mean the exact same is going to happen for you. But it's good to hear about other people's experiences, both positive and negative, so you can use a wide breadth of information to make up your own mind. So first, pain during insertion of the device. This is one that women experience to different degrees. It might depend on your pain threshold or feeling anxious before or even during the procedure. To a very small extent, the scale of your IUD fitter is important, but clinicians undergo a lot of training before they become approved IUD fitters to make sure they can perform the procedure properly and help you feel comfortable while it's going on. So it may be a very uncomfortable or painful experience for some, while for others, it's a little uncomfortable, they recover quickly. During the procedure, your clinician will apply some anesthetic gel to ease the fitting or insertion of the IUD. But if you're especially worried about your pain level, you can take some painkillers like acetaminophen or paracetamol or ibuprofen in the one or two hours before your fitting to help manage the pain. Many practitioners will arrange your IUD fitting while you're on your period, mostly to ensure that you're not pregnant when it is being fitted. But if it's not fitted during your period, having a negative pregnancy test before the fitting is fine. So why else do women hate the IUD? These next reasons apply after the IUD is in place and for some people may happen within a just a few hours of fitting. First, pelvic pain. Now, this is described as having painful cramps from or around the lower abdomen or pelvis, sometimes radiating upwards and towards the back, towards the buttock or the legs. For some, the pain can be moderate, but many girls experience pretty severe pain that can bring them to the emergency department. What could be happening here is from the effect of inflammation on the womb as it adjusts to the presence of the foreign device inside the cavity. This can lead to your body producing excess amounts of chemicals like prostaglandins. And you might remember these prostaglandins from our video on painful periods. They lead to excessive muscle cramping of the womb, such as what you have with painful periods in primary dysmenorrhea. 
So with fitting an IUD or coil, we expect some cramping, but it tends to settle for most people within a few hours or days of fitting. However, regardless of the timing, please report any pelvic or low abdominal pain that is severe or you think is just steadily getting worse that develops after fitting an IUD to your doctor so that we can investigate what could be going on. The next side effect is bleeding, vaginal bleeding. Usually the problem is irregular periods and heavy vaginal bleeding. It is usually more common with the copper IUD, but it can happen with the hormone IUD as well. So women have described very heavy bleeding with clots, changes to their period pattern with prolonged bleeding, and experiencing unexpected bleeding episodes. Whether it's spotting or heavier, it's just not expected. Some complain of just continuous bleeding since they had the coil fitted. Again, we believe the abnormal bleeding pattern and the excess amount of blood lost are due to inflammation triggered by the IUD being inside the womb. But we think that this bleeding often reduces with time in most women. And those who are on the hormone, that's the progesterone IUD, will experience less frequent bleeding, especially after the first year. Some women can gain some relief by using non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medicines like naproxen or drugs like tranexamic or methanamic acid to control bleeding. The next concern that many women have about the IUD has to do with different side effects that are related to the progesterone within the coil. So this is now specific to the progesterone IUD. They include problems like acne, breast soreness or tenderness, mood changes, headaches, and so on. Now, they can happen to different degrees, but women with these complaints usually experience relief after they've stopped using the IUD. Some women using both the copper coil and the progesterone or hormone IUD also complain about a loss of their sex drive. However, there isn't enough proof to indicate the coil, whether copper or progesterone causes this problem generally, because some women feel no different with their sex drive using these methods. And for some, <laughs> their sex drive gets better. So if a woman is concerned that her libido has dropped or reduced since using or since fitting the coil, we would consider other possible causes. And if addressing those makes no difference, it's a good idea to remove the coil. So these are some of the more common side effects that women experience with the IUD that makes them not very keen, dislike it, or just want it taken away. So let's leave side effects because there are still some other reasons that women say they can't stand the IUD. First, the fear that it might pop out or fall out. Hmm. Well, I have to tell you it is true that your IUD can fall out. The overall risk of that happening is 1 out of 20 women, so that's quite common, and it's more likely to happen within the first year and around the first three months when you fitted it and during a period. <sighs> The coil is also more likely to fall out if it's inserted immediately after childbirth. In teenagers, people with fibroids or who have heavy menstrual bleeding and other causes of a distorted womb, if you're using a menstrual product like the menstrual cup and if it's fallen out before. So it is important that you keep track of your threads by feeling them at least once a month after your menstrual period. Some women cannot tolerate having the coil because they are afraid it might perforate their womb or other organs and travel to other parts of the body. I can completely understand this fear, but how often does it actually happen? Well, the answer is not much. According to the Faculty of Sexual and Reproductive Healthcare, the FSRH, the rate of your coil perforating your womb and moving around the body is actually very low. So we're speaking in terms of numbers of around one or two women in every thousand. Perforation is also something that is probably more common in women who've had their coil fitted soon after having their baby. Signs of perforation can include low abdominal or pelvic pain, being unable to feel your threads, or you notice a change to your bleeding pattern. Please seek urgent medical advice. 
The next reason that we're looking at today is the fear that having the IUD in place increases the risk of infections. Many women are pretty sure that it's because they have the IUD that they're getting more episodes of thrush or BV, that's bacterial vaginosis, in a way that never happened before they got the coil. Some of this fear might be valid, but we have to say that we don't see these infections in every woman who's using the coil. However, what about PID, that's pelvic inflammatory disease? We know that the risk of having a serious pelvic infection is highest within the first three weeks of fitting the coil, but it's not a common event. If a woman with a coil does develop a severe infection like a PID, she needs urgent treatment. And something that's very rare though, women who've had the IUD for a very long time may be more likely to develop some type of chronic bacterial infection. Another reason that many women find the coil mm, not their cup of tea is the worry about how difficult it might be to remove it. This is usually something that applies to a woman who had a really bad time when her coil was being fitted, or if it's difficult to reach the threads of the coil, or in some rare instance where the coil itself it has fixed to the lining of the womb. This one <laughs> is one reason why women don't like the coil. Failure, the fact that it fails and they become pregnant on the coil. Yes. An unlucky 1-2% to 2 of you can experience method failure while on the coil. I know it's not funny. It's possible, but it's a very, very low risk because it's such an effective method. Having said that though, important to note, even though the risk is low, if pregnancy does happen, there is a chance that that pregnancy will be ectopic, so it is located outside of the womb. That is, in the very small chance that the pregnancy occurs, it may be an ectopic pregnancy. Please bear that in mind, although the risk of it happening is very low. Another worry is fear of cancer. Now, this is related to the progesterone coil in particular, where there is a small risk of breast cancer associated with using the coil, regardless of how long you've had the coil fitted. But let's put it in context, because remember that all hormonal birth control do have a small increased risk of breast cancer and this is thanks to the hormone content of course um, although the risk is still relatively small according to a large study regardless of age there was no major difference in breast cancer risk between women using the progesterone coil like Mirena or JDES or um, Skylar and those who didn't. So please, this is a discussion that you must have with your provider regarding your concern about cancer. Whether or not you have a family history of had cancer before, it's a discussion so that you know what the risks are regarding the method that you want to use. And another worry that many women have is the possibility that the IUD could make them infertile. Of course, many women experience a delay in the return of their fertility when using or after they've stopped using the depot shot. However, this is not the same with the IUD. Generally, most women's experience is that when you have the IUD fitted, your fertility does come back quite quickly. Another one, and it is by no means the least, is that many women simply cannot tolerate the idea of having a foreign device in their womb. They may just prefer other forms of contraception and the coil is just not their cup of tea. So what's been your experience with the IUD? Do you love it or hate it? <laughs> and whichever the case, why? Do let me know in the comment section. It's important to remember that no two people will share exactly the same experience. So please bear this in mind when you're making your decision about any method. Learn about different methods from reputable sources and speaking to people who you know may have used them so you can get a fair idea and you can choose what will suit you best. Speaking of reputable sources, check out these other videos on my Smart Birth Control playlist and I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.